Welcome to the Honesty Time Podcast, episode number 294. Thanks for listening. Fellow auto detailers, welcome to the show that features interviews with today's most successful auto detailers. This is the Auto Detailing Podcast. Here's your host, Jimbo Balaam. All right, welcome to episode 294 of the Auto Detailing Podcast. Hope you enjoyed that little intro. For those of you that have little ones at home, uh, that was actually my daughter. This episode is, wow, what an episode. I was uh, contacted from uh, the guys up at Jay Leno's Car Care to come up there and do an episode with them um, to talk about their car care line. And uh, to be completely fair, I wasn't sure what to expect. I've seen kind of the hoopla going around the industry with uh, kind of a lot of people giving them crap about the product, uh, probably because, or I know now because of uh, the Jay Leno brand or the Jay Leno name, people just thought it was just crap kind of relabeled and put together. And I was pleasantly surprised. Um, I met two awesome dudes uh, that I now consider friends and Chris and Jeremy. Uh, The verdict is still out whether they consider me a friend or not, but... um, we when I got so I I got to go to Jay Leno's garage on a day that they were actually filming um, at the garage and did a private tour with just me, Chris, and Jeremy um, and my friend Greg who asked a question on this episode. Um, so thanks for Greg for battling the traffic with me. We spent over three hours, almost four hours total in traffic, uh, getting to and from uh, Jay's garage. But it was well worth it. Um, so after the private tour. Um, I sat down with Chris, um, and we talked about the Jay Leno brand, uh, the Jay Leno car care brand, um, and he's really the marketing mind behind it. Him and his friend Jeremy, who I've been friends for a long time, um, are kind of overseeing the whole car care brand of things, um, and these are just really two solid, solid dudes. Uh, come to find out, we don't live that far from each other, so that's why I say I really, really hope that we can maintain uh, this relationship with them because they were just super cool dudes. Uh, anyway, in regards to kind of car care and, and looking after your car, obviously you're listening to this podcast because you care and maybe you care about Jay Leno, which is cool too. Um, but also, um, I want to talk about auto fiber and you know, this past week I've been really kind of looking at, um, microfiber towels on Amazon and through other companies and stuff like that. And the one thing that I took away is I've been doing detailing specifically for about 10 years. Um, and I get super confused by the offerings of either other companies or Amazon or whatever of what towel would be the perfect fit for me. And then I went over to autofiber.com and what I really loved is that Ian puts kits together to make it simple. So it's like almost like microfiber towels simplified, which is really my style. Let's just get to the, the simplest part about it. I don't need a million towels. I just need the towels that are most effective and efficient and work. Um, so that's one thing I really like about auto fiber that I realized this week is the efficiency and how simplified they'd make it. And we took it even one step further and simplified it even more in creating the Jimbo kit. I went through Ian's uh, inventory and kind of curated my own package to eliminate the confusion. So if you want, you can get 20% off at autofiber.com or you can pick up the Jimbo kit, which I'm seeing around on a couple of these Facebook groups guys are really, really enjoying. So a couple extra scrub pads for you. And all that at autofiber.com. You could pick up the Jimbo kit or pick up just a single towel if you want to try them out um, and you don't want to spend that much money. Get 20% off and free shipping. All you got to do is use offer code Jimbo. I hope you enjoy this episode. Uh Uh-oh. Episode. I'm losing it. I better cut out this intro. Episode. And there's my little one saying bye. All right, welcome to this episode of the Auto Detailing Podcast. We just left Jeremy. Actually, Jeremy ditched us, but we still got Chris left from yep. uh, Jay Leno's Garage Products. I'll have to suffice, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah. He didn't want to be here and be stuck in traffic yeah, forever. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to get down a little bit before we got to traverse the uh, L.A. traffic from Burbank to Orange County, right. you know? Cool. And we got Greg here. If you decide to chime in, Greg, you can chime, chime in, Greg, in. where you feel necessary. <laughs> Sounds good. But we just did a, a full-blown tour of this garage, and man, what, a, what an amazing place to uh to work huh yeah it's you know it's unique um you can't for a car guy you know it's what i grew up kind of restoring cars 
you can't beat this. Yeah, let's get know? into that. I like to hear kind of the story behind, you know, obviously you just don't knock on the door to, to Jay's building. First of all, which door do you knock yeah, on? Yeah, exactly. Second of all, you're not just going to knock on a door and get the gig of, of maintaining these cars. So kind of what's your what's your history with cars or yeah. to get you to where you are at this point? Yeah, definitely. Um, so, I mean, I grew up uh, with my dad. He was, you know, a line mechanic before he was a cop. Uh, with Ford and so I grew up I had a 53 Chevy pickup when I was 13 years old you know I kind of restored cars all through high school um, I was big into Volkswagens was my main thing air-cooled vintage Volkswagens I got into um, and just have always worked on cars um, from whether it was mechanical engine type stuff I, you know rebuilding engines was always in auto shop and all that but always had this history and this uh, or at least a love for the history of cars and just drawn to kind of vintage cars working on them all Got that it. fun stuff you know so, so this really is a dream come yeah, true for this you. Was, this is yeah. this is the ultimate yeah you can't beat this i right. mean you walk in and it's kind of everything although jay doesn't have any vintage volkswagens so maybe i know and only that. one one porsche yeah well or, he's got a few porsches okay. yeah so he's got that 356 yep. he's got the one that's being oh that's painted true now. right and he's got the gt as well so. but compared to everything else he's exactly. got it's like yeah you know, yeah so thanks <laughs> gotta spread a little bit of the love yeah no but no bug or no, bug no bus you, no nothing you think but sometimes you see him on the episodes but okay. you know um so yeah for me it, it was a dream but it was from going from that being in my high school auto shop to where i am today that's you know there's a lot in between there jeremy and i have been doing this together now I've been part of the business for the last five years, um, but I've known Jeremy since we were kids. We okay. grew up, his dad was my football coach. We played Little League together. Um, we didn't go to the same schools, but grew up right down the street from each other. So Got we've it. known each other since we were, I don't know, seven or eight years old. Okay. Um, Jeremy and his dad had uh, the business originally as System One. Yep. Um, that was, you know, compounds and polish. Really, they were focusing on a single step system. And it was really cutting edge at the time because exactly. this is early 2000s. I remember System Well One, uh, System One Well. Um, early 2000s, single compound, double sided pad. pad. Yeah. You know, I, I think it was a, even a blended wool pad it at was, that. Yeah. Um, and they have this contraption that you put on a DeWalt rotary that you can Made flip it. the pad yeah. over really quickly. And, and so I remember that was very, very cutting edge at the time. That was brand new, and that's what they were really focusing on. Was In fact, didn't McGuire's solo one yes, come out after that? Afterwards. And wasn't there maybe some con- – and I don't know how much you know, and I know nothing. But yeah. I, I remember kind of hearing some controversy yeah. about, like, this solo one, yeah. you know, system one And I thing. won't say we, we spearheaded that movement of a single product system. I but know. It, it came out, yeah. and everyone, a lot of folks kind of paid attention to a that lot. on yeah. what was there. And, and the abrasives that were coming out then were brand new at the time, yeah. and everyone was... It was very was, cutting edge. Yeah, so everyone was kind of tuned into it. They wanted to see. I mean, so much so, it's not just Meguiar's. It was really in the pad technology as well. Okay. We used to purchase those double-sided pads from a manufacturer back on the East Coast. Okay. Um, that double-sided uh adapter that went on the pad right that was unique that had a patent to it it wasn't that. ours yeah. but it was our pad manufacturers right well big name 3m came in got purchased it. that pad manufacturer and now if you're familiar with 3m's line they've got those double-sided pads yep. it's not wool and foam on the same and they pad, even went but, blended with the rotary pad with yeah. the, i think the burgundy or maybe that was mcguire i don't remember but okay cool yeah so they 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 grabbed that uh that quick disconnector from our pad manufacturer so some of the things that system one was doing in the early days got mimicked a little bit and you know not saying again that we were setting the trend or anything like that but you were but we were we were there doing this stuff so did that screw you guys up when 3m buys the yes okay yeah that's so was that the kind of was that a, a big component of what happened with System One? Was you couldn't get your because that was a big part of it. The yeah. Double-sided, the double sided pad, the the quick disconnect thing. That was a huge part. That of was it. a big portion of it, and yeah, it, that, that definitely put a, a stick in the spokes for us. Um, wasn't the end of the end of the 
road for us. You know, we found some things that worked really well. Buff and Shine does a very good job at making pads. They have a good interface system. I've sat um, down with Richard yeah, myself, so yeah, yeah I know so them well. They, uh, they do a very good job. They're great friends of ours, um, and so we've really relied on them uh, for pad stuff for the System 51 business in the past. They just they helped us kind of fill that gap right away immediately. So um, that did throw a bit of a wrench in it, though. But, yeah, you know, the business everyone kind of took in that single step system right looked at it um but that's great for kind of the diy guy the mm-hmm. at home guy when you're not so worried about speed and how quickly you're processing jobs out um but for the guys in the professional body shop their big thing is cycle time right and there's no money allocated from the insurance company right. to detailing. Uh, there might be a few bucks there on the backside time-wise, but it's not anything substantial, not anything that you're going to spend extra time trying to polish. Right. Um, so that was kind of the feedback that we got, and that's what kind of ushered in some of the changes. This is a great polish. It finishes well. We can cut with it too, but it's nowhere near as aggressive as a cutting compound that's okay. designated for that. Right. So if you're taking your time and you're doing a concourse level job and you don't want something super aggressive, that original System 1 stuff was great for that. But the System 51 stuff, that came in. And not to make this about System 51, we'll move on quickly from that. But that's kind of what ushered us into this. And that was the change was we went from a single product system to a three product system. We developed okay. a cutting compound, a medium grade, and then still utilize that original System 1 formulation for that finishing polish. Okay. Um, and that helped us be more effective in the body shop as far as the System okay. 51 business went. So, right. um, But while that was all going on, we did a couple of demo videos with Jay. I remember those. Yeah. yeah so I remember and those. Jeremy was part of that. Um, and from that really kind of kicked off our relationship with Jay in the garage. Okay. We stayed involved from What there. year is this, you think? Man, I th- and I forget what I said on uh, Matt's... Uh, Maybe like... Podcast. 2008. I, yeah, mid 2000s, okay. 2006, 2007, sure. okay. 08, that area there. Um, that was where the, the big switch happened, but that's also kind of when Jeremy started getting involved with uh, the garage and just staying in their ear, you know. Um, we always, again, we played sports growing up, so we tie everything back to a sports analogy a lot okay. of the time, but. The idea was stay around the ball. Yep. You know, in yep. football, if you're around the ball, it doesn't mean it matter if you're on offense or defense. Right. If you find the ball and you just run towards it, yep. stay around it, something's going to happen. And mm-hmm. so we kind of took that approach a little bit. Um, it took a few years. You know, Jeremy was leading the way on that. He uh, got involved with Jay had it at the time an in house detailer. For being so confident in pursuing Jay, he ducked out on our podcast. What's yeah, that? what the heck, dude? I know, man. <laughs> This problem. Well, the problem is, is work's got to be done yeah. here. There's a couple warehouse buildings full of cars <laughs> yeah. that need to be cleaned. So we can be here till right, tomorrow right. afternoon if we want to. Um, but yeah, that was what kept him. That's what got him involved was that kind of demo video. And then he stayed involved. Um, they had an in-house detailer who was, that was his job, was just to maintain the appearance of the cars. Wow. Um, and as you can imagine, everyone wants to tie their product name right. to the garage. Absolutely. And we were on that same boat, right, you know. Right, right. So it was a friendly relationship. We would come every now and then, okay. drop some product off, see how they were doing, and see if he had any questions, if there was anything we could help with. All the while Got knowing it. that all the McGuire's reps are stopping by. Of course. The mother's yeah. reps are stopping by. Everyone's right. here. Jay's got a, a whole shelf full of right. pretty much everything that's out there car care wise. So, right. Um, and probably non care car. Exactly. <laughs> he yeah. like he saves everything. Yeah, he's got pretty much anything <laughs> car related. You could probably you can, live here. If yeah. you just had a steady supply of food, exactly. you could like, live here. Yeah, you don't need anything. There's power, there's a shower, there's, there's couches, couches, kitchen. Non stop. But um, yeah, it, you know, that was our our biggest thing though was just okay if anything kind of get him used to our stuff and like our stuff and use it and so that was a few years worth of doing that back and forth and then jay ended up parting ways with the in-house detailer okay not real sure what happened there not too worried about it but Um, yeah. They yeah, were, really not worried we about were, it now, We huh? weren't asking any questions, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, Doesn't matter. We got the phone call one day saying, <laughs> hey, you know, uh, we no longer have a detailer here. Uh, it's been about a month or so since oh, anybody's great. touched the cars. Do you have anybody you can recommend? 
Um, and at that point, I was now involved with System 51. Um, that was kind of right when I started with the business. And I looked at Jeremy and I said, I know we don't necessarily detail as part of our business model, right. but guess what? <laughs> we do now. We do, we do now. Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll yeah. go out and, and, and be detailers. And that was our first detailing account that we picked up prior yeah. to that. We were solely focused on just manufacturing product and fulfilling kind Got of that it. warehouse distribution model. Um, so that really kicked off us as, oh, let's bring in detailing as part of okay. what we do. And I think a lot of guys do that nowadays. You see a lot. Of, I know there's a few local companies here that they have their product, but they also offer the detail yeah. uh, service. And I think it does well for some guys. You know, um, If you're able to do it, it it's awesome. Um, and so that, that really is what started us. We came checked everything out of course saw how big everything yeah. was how many cars are uh, is there an exact number or, or a rough number because I'm, I'm it's, sure it's changing but. it's growing it's ever growing yeah. um, I think the last count was somewhere in the like 175 okay. to 190 cars. car range right. yeah um, I, I might be off on that. Um, I, I know once you get past five, it's considered <laughs> yeah. a lot. Yeah. So uh, yeah. there's plenty. And they're all different shapes and sizes. <laughs> sizes and, and all sorts gosh. of stuff in different, in different states as far as their, their appearance and what right. they need and right. uh, what we're okay to do on and so, so on and so forth. So, you know, to make a, a, a definitely a long story short right. and kind of try to wrap up some of this um, is – that's you know what kept us in that that that's kind of how we started off okay. right or not kept us in is that's where we but you were part of the conversation that was going and so when they had a need you were you were around exactly. to step up and fulfill that need maybe in a way that even some of the other brand reps couldn't exactly. because you know i i don't think mcguire's has a detailed team that they send out that they're going to send out you know, and cater or, to what the needs exactly. are you know? so so i think you guys had that unfair advantage in that sense that you were you know a, maybe a smaller company didn't have that brand recognition mm-hmm. but you had the agility and ability to to fulfill a need that they had and yeah, that was exactly the, that was the open door for you yeah and we capitalized you know right. not not to oh pat us on our back we this was always a pipe dream for us you know was Man, we to be able to do some sort of to get a brand name onto us, it would right. to bring that spotlight. Like it's such a hard uphill battle. Right. It's such an impacted yeah, market. Yeah, because you're dealing you know? with ginormous monsters. Too. Yeah, and to you try know. to to try to go to bat with some of those guys, something was going to need to change, or we were just going to have a very long road right. ahead of us. Not impossible, but not the easiest road. And, and expensive. so expensive. So. Um, we kind of looked at some opportunity there. Um, you know, we started, we saw Jay's garage as the ball, you know, is okay. let's be around it. Let's right. take the opportunity. It doesn't matter. And something that, and I don't know if you're familiar with him. He's friends of the garage, but Adam Carolla, he yeah. does all his stuff. I've never heard of him. Yeah, never heard of Have him, right? Heard of if you're him? in the no, podcasting, I'm not sure. no one's yeah, ever heard of him. Yeah, never heard of Adam Carolla, <laughs> but, only the number one podcast. <laughs> right? But... <laughs> I grew up listening to him here, you know, again, not to get too far off on a, on a side subject, but I grew up listening to him here in p- part of even on Loveline yeah. on the mornings when he transitioned to the, uh, to his podcast, it was part of the recurring theme that he would always say. And everyone would always ask him, you know, how'd you do it? You went from this kid in the Valley right. here in Southern California to now you're on the man show, you're doing radio, you got your own podcast, all this stuff. And this whole thing was do work for free. You know, especially when you're starting out. So funny you say that. I talk, I, I tell detailers that all the time, especially when you're just starting out. Yeah. No, obscurity is your biggest problem. Exactly. No one knows who you are. No one cares who you are. Yeah. You're going to have to make a name. You're yeah. going to have to make a name, and you got to do that somehow. Exactly. And know? so, and I, and that was always for me listening to that growing up. I mean, it was a huge influence in my life just listening to that stuff and. So that always that was always kind of a, a driving force for me, especially with this. Is it was it was like okay, we're not necessarily the most established in this marketplace right. as far as having the authority. People don't necessarily know who the System Fifty One brand is outside of Southern California. There's people who know us here, you know. So, um, but it was trying to kind of get all of that together you know i think okay. that's my train of thought yeah but it's okay go I, ahead, actually Greg. i want to chime in wait you're going to chime in yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. i, 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 I want to know because it kind of relates to my business too i wanted to know how 
the transition was when Jay first reached out, wondering if you guys had a detailer. Yeah. Not having really any detail experience, was there pushback from him now, uh, about that transition? So we had detail experience. That's not to say we didn't have of any okay. any detail experience. We definitely had detail experience. I had detail experience from growing up. Okay. Um, and then we had the experience from creating the product. We've got to do the R and D. Right. We were in the body shop as much as a lot of detailing, hardcore detailing, is in the polishing. You know the application that machine polisher. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah so. Yeah. That was we knew that like the back of our hand. I learned on a rotary polisher, and if you're if you know polishing, rotary is yeah. kind of the scalpel. Where right. nowadays the new technology, the dual action is a lot. The learning curve is a lot less. So I kind of cut my teeth on that rotary. So we had the uh, the the detailing knowledge though, and so and that was you know that's why they came to yeah. us is they knew we knew detailing. But as far as what we did to make money on a day-to-day, -day, Jeremy and I with the business. Just products. Yeah, it was simply yeah. products. We okay. didn't have that. We didn't offer that as a service to anybody. So, yeah, that transition wasn't there was too no difficult. Pushback, yeah, yeah. Um, they, they trusted us in that fact. But the point that I was getting at prior to that was, um, you know, the transition of coming in here is we started and it was, you know, Corolla talking all the time, work for free, work for free, get people to know you, build that notoriety. Right. And then once you, if you're doing a good job, yeah, you might be busting your butt and not making any money at doing it. But if you're doing a good job and if you're really good at what you think you're going to be it's doing and what you that won't last that long and the paydays will start coming yeah. and not, maybe not necessarily huge, tremendous paydays, but but guess it gets what? You in. Get you in, and that's really what happened for us. Is we came, we just kept our head down, didn't screw around. We just came, made the cars look right, and kind of just stayed around the ball in that sense. Um, and then, kind of, you know, hey, you guys are doing great. You come in once a month. We need you here more frequently. And then, sure enough, the talk about payday came. Like, you know, you guys are coming frequently enough. We'd like to pay you. You know, you're here. We rely on you. Let's get you paid. And so. That kind of transition to it being this tester to we like you to okay, now this is you know, we just brought on a customer, you know, arguably right. one of the biggest customers in the automotive world. Right. So that was like, whoa, that was a huge win for us. And we did that for I don't know a year or so, maybe not even that much. Um, but again, the private label, the 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 doing it with Jay's name was always kind of that pipe dream. Okay. Like, let's do it. And yep. again, windshield time, the drive from where yep. we're at to Burbank is about an hour and a half. So Jeremy and I, every week, were talking how awesome it would be, man. Right. We know how to do product. We know how to run websites. We know right. how to ship product out. We'd love this opportunity to have Jay's name on it. It's going to yep. bring attention to our brand yep. um, and really don't even care about bringing attention to our brand. Right. Let's build and a brand. And that's been the, and, and I think you did a, a good job talking about kind of, because there is some speculation of like, well, who, what is this crap? Yeah, who's is it, doing it? Who's yeah. doing it? And, and um, I th that was the big takeaway that I got from Matt's podcast. Yeah. And, and I would encourage people to go listen to the podcast that, uh, Matt did with you guys in Obsessed Garage, but you know I think that's a smooth transition from the System 51 brand to the Jay Leno brand, yeah. you know, and that makes sense. And I think people get it, and they're like, okay. And for me, when I listened, it like broke down a wall of like, right, because we were just talking about a brand that you know they they have a bigger name, mm -hmm. um, you know, m not in the car care space, but they have a bigger uh, a car name out yeah. there and they you know hire on the wrong people and maybe bring in not you know subpar brands and then they're here for a year or two and then they're you know they at walmart away. on yeah. the half off rack and uh -huh. you know selling for three bucks a bottle yeah you know and, and obviously you you took so much energy effort time sweat equity to even get here to be able to pre present jay with the opportunity to say hey why don't we do this kind of collab together yeah you know so i think that's a that you guys went about it in a really really smart way yeah and you know we weren't what we weren't trying to do and this got kicked around in the beginning is you know what do we do do we launch a brand name we license jay's name we, right. we slap the name on it and we put it on walmart shelf right and and we do it and not to say that it's that easy there's a lot more said than done in that well, in that statement but to yeah. make things simplified sometimes it is that easy. yeah um, you know it, is that <laughs> how get to be. yeah is that how we right. go about this do we want to just strictly go consumer and you know 
from the System 51 business, we know very well that even with a strong brand name, it isn't just a light switch and people are going to accept you. And, right. Uh, you've got to establish yourself in the marketplace as right. an expert. And, right. and people, they know Jay as a car guy, but they right. don't know Jay as a car care expert. Right. Um, so we knew that that was going to be an uphill battle. Um, and if it were going to be successful, if we were going to do things and have it last and have it stick and not be one of those brands that right. falls off after six months and you see it on the shelf right. being discounted, slashed, you know, buy it for a dollar a right. bottle, whatever it is, we knew we were going to have to establish some groundwork um, for that to be, number one, people to try us. There's a lot of brand loyalty right. in the car care space, yeah. understandably so, when you find something that works, especially if you know car care, you know how much stuff that's out there that is, for lack of a better term, crap, right. um, to be able to now... You have stuff that's actually legitimate um, that is, a, you know, was the biggest thing for us was to kind of break down that apprehension for the consumer out there to mm -hmm. say, ah, oh, this is just a money grab. Jay's just right. throwing his name on the bottle and we know nothing about it. Right. Jay's not. I know my McGuire stuff. I know it works. That's what I'm going right. to use. That's what we have to combat. And that's why, oh, why are we going to go straight to the, the shelf? Right. We're only going to end up here. We've got to do some groundwork here to explain the story that this isn't just Jay licensing his name to right. some chemical manufacturer right. who can bottle it and throw it out there. I mean, we are a chemical manufacturer, but right. we're a small time chemical manufacturer right. who has focused on eco-friendly blending and water-based formulations and trying to, there's a lot of replication in this industry, but there's a lot of things you can do that differentiate sure. yourself. And right. so that was always the biggest thing for us. And we wanted to carry that over into the J brand is Give it a real fighting chance. Not have everyone write it off. Is right. give us a try. We're putting the best possible chemical in for what we feel for what sure. it does. We're putting that in the bottle, and we right. know we guarantee that it'll work. We've got a hundred percent money back guarantee. Mm. Give us a try. You're gonna love what's in the bottle type thing. But we had to do it this route uh, and and start smaller. Right. Um, you know. So we launched our own e-commerce website. We launched it under Jay's brand name. Um, and just went that way with it, and we're we're here now. We're about eight months in. Okay. We launched. I was just going to ask what when you launched about eight months ago. Yeah. Okay. So Black Friday is when everything went live. Okay. Uh, we started with a small, basic four-piece kit. Um, we've now expanded. I think we're coming into now twenty-six different chemicals. Wow. Um, a lot of the stuff we had blended and, sure. and already kind of set up. We knew what the mix designs were going to mm -hmm. be. We just needed to have a label to put sure. it on. So. We've got that. So we were able to move pretty quickly there. And so this first year has really been that is we, we started November. We wanted to test the market, see how it went. So we launched with a four piece kit that did very well, was received very well. Mm. Um, we definitely got some pushback and some flack. You sure. know, I think nowadays with uh, social media is you're giving everyone a microphone, everyone right. a platform. 100%. And so everyone regardless good bad or indifferent right. has something to say right. and they can make their right. opinion heard so sure. um and i think it's a good thing though for from that standpoint is we can make adjustments right. as, you right. know people see things they don't like it they do like it or we can make quick adjustments in that sense so it, it's a good positive thing but yeah it was received very well and then we kind of looked and said well looks like this is a real business let's right. Let's really let's light the fire underneath right. it. So that's we're kind of in that product development mode right okay. now. And cool. Yeah, we've got a lot of uh, cool things coming up. I mean, we've got now abrasives with buffing pads. We've partnered with Rupes. Okay. Uh, so we've got a lot of great things coming up. Nice. Really looking at this to be a a one stop resource for yeah. people who you know. Not necessarily going after the professional detailer. Okay. Yeah, who, um, I was going to ask, who's the market? Who, yeah. Who do you want to... Obviously, you wouldn't mind the uh, detailer trying it and yeah. testing it out, but but who's the target market? Yeah, you know, the consumer, the guy, the DIY guy who's doing it at home and, and might take things a little more seriously okay. than just a bucket and a wash right. who is, is, you know... Uh, has a, a kind of disconcerting view on I right. like what my car looks like. I want to take an active role in how that happens. Um, we, you know, we've talked about Obsessed Garage a couple of times. Right. I think Matt has built an awesome community yeah. of those type of guys right. who are – they're not professional detailers necessarily. Right. A lot of them have their own jobs doing their yeah. own thing, um, but they like detailing cars. And I think it's uh, – yeah, it's <laughs> – 
it's therapeutic on some level, you right. know, so, totally. you know, to get down that, that rabbit hole, but those are kind of who we're going after. Like you okay. said, getting that professional detailer, getting that buy would be great. Um, we think they're chemical that can stand toe to toe with anything that a professional right. is using. Um, but you know, that's even more of an uphill battle, right. um, for us, you know, again, those guys are even more loyal to their brand right. because they're, you're fine. You can come over here. Their bread and butter is relying on it. You know, do you have a question? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Um, all your stuff is over there. Do you want me to put it somewhere? No, you're good. I'll go clean it up. Okay. And they you're... just got back in there to sell. Did they? Okay. Is there anything in the way that we... Is it like off to the side by that statue thingy? Okay. Cool. That should be good. I'll go clean it up. Okay. You're done though? Yes. Yeah. Alrighty. I mean, as far as I know, if I miss anything, I'll come back because... Okay. I really don't know what they need for the video, I guess. Okay. Yeah. They and like I... all left in a hurry because they were going to a shoot. Ah. Uh, okay. And they yeah. Lucky you. Okay. So I'll call Corey and touch base, let him know kind of what we shot. And then if anything needs to change, we're here next week. Okay. It should so. all be pretty generic okay. shots and, or blurry if it's like a single car. Yeah, okay. Right on. Thank you very much. You. Drive safe. Can I leave that in? You can leave that in. Okay. Did you have a question, Greg? No, I was just saying I'm, I'm that guy you're talking about. Yeah. DIY, I, I you know, like to put a lot of sweat and tears into my car, but I'm not a professional detailer, detailer like yeah. Jimbo. Got so it. Yeah. I'm yeah. exactly what, what that we're going after. for. Yeah, and, and that's really what it is, is we wanted to have – solid chemical that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody in the market um, but you know something that's a little more friendly that isn't so intimidating okay. and I think Jay right. uh, lends that to kind of that detailing crowd I think there's a lot of guys out there who you know uh, might be doing kind of what you're doing um, where they're working but they, they like the idea of detailing they've seen a few videos online and I think I could do that right. especially now with the polishing technology it isn't Right. So difficult right. anymore to achieve. It's not easy right. by any means. It's still a lot of time, a lot right. of effort, you know, not to take anything away from anybody out there that's yeah, doing it sure. for a living. No, but no, yeah, no. It, 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 the barrier of entry is a lot lower totally. than it used to be, you know, 100%. so, um, and I think Jay kind of lends that to us. Looks good. Hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're fine. So where do you, where do you see the, uh, uh, and and I love. I said background noise is good because I love kind of you know if someone's listening to this. You know they got their earbuds in. They're listening on their, uh, in their car or something. And it's like to get the background ambiance and yeah, interruption yeah. and stuff like that. It, it does bring a very cool element to uh, it. To it, which is why I like using just the small recorder instead of like headphones and mics for everyone. Yeah, yeah. Because then that limits the background noise, and I feel like it kind of can kill the vibe. Yeah, anyway, you lose some of that. Yeah, yeah, you lose some of that. So where do you see kind of the What's the next few steps for the Jay Leno brand? Um, I want to go there, and then how can people buy it, and then we'll kind of wrap up. Yeah, cool. So the next steps, if right now for 2017, our biggest thing is really get the the uh, brand of chemical up, and as far as you know, have an offering in each of these categories okay. that we can compete with the rest of the guys out there that are in this market space. Um, and I, I think you guys know the brands, but there's a, a few of them out there that are that centered on that e-commerce yep. market, uh, that e-commerce uh, model rather, not market. And uh, that that's what they focus on. And so we're gonna kinda, we're gonna farm this right okay. now as that this first year is really getting our feet up underneath us. Mm -hmm. um, we've proved to people that it's legitimate. We've gotten a ton of reviews on our website of people who have tried it and just they they love it cool. go gangbusters for what they have so we want to continue that uh, but our biggest thing right now is getting the line as a full offering tools okay. accessories and everything i Got mean it. we're looking at uh, uh, clay mitts right now we're yeah. looking at you know even just clay just by itself clay bars uh, you know everything we want to have the tools there um, you know, some of the stuff is pretty much the norm in, sure. in detailing. So we want to kind of get us up to that level. Um, and then, you know, next steps, we are looking, we do want to bring this to retail. Okay. Um, that definitely is a goal of ours. Right. Um, so we're probably, you know, a, about another year away from that, I would say. We're okay. looking at some, some options right sure. now. And, 
you know, that's even with Jay's name, that's still going to be testing sure. small markets and but making you're trying sure. trying to lay down the right foundation first, and then you can build to all exactly. those. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, because the last thing I want to do is is tarnish Jay's name. Right. It, it, this isn't. We knew going into it that it, again wasn't going to be accepted wholeheartedly. Right. There was going to be apprehension. There was going to sure. be a lot of naysayers. So we wanted to combat that before it turned into a firestorm right. and engulfed everything right. and sunk it before we even had right. a chance to, to say anything. Exactly. Got so um, we, you know, that's been our our biggest, uh, our one of our bigger drivers of this first year is just brand awareness. Got it. Getting people to understand that Jay now has a line of chemical, right? Um, and it's actually very good. Let me okay. give it a try. Right. I care about. I like to wash my car. I like to detail my own car. I want to give it a try. Right. I know Jay is a car guy. You know, that's kind of some of our internal thought is, Got yeah, it. Jay is the car guy. Jay wouldn't put his name on something right. that was, you know, half-assed, right. really. Right. Um, and and you guys actually use it in the garage. I saw as we kind of walked around each one room, there was always a cart close by cart with, stuff, yeah. with the stuff. So that the it's not like you're using some other brand of chemicals. And I know that was a, quite a conversation with Matt's podcast yeah and I thought you held up pretty well yeah. not really revealing anything yeah you know but but really it is the Jay Leno line of car care yeah. products that you guys are actually using yeah and you and know? you know what and I'll, I'll talk about it here too that's that's not something that we're worried about the you know this has been a conglomerate of kind of things happening and we we had our business here, but there were some things that we could do better. You know, again, we were more focused on warehouse distribution. So the e-commerce distribution and running an e-commerce site, right. we had knowledge. We had our own site, but at the volume right. that we were about to step into, you know, we were like, eh, let's look at somebody who maybe has done this okay. before. Um, and so that's that's where the Adams brand came in, is they had a proven model of an e-commerce brand that they were able to, okay, this is some of the things that you guys are gonna need to look out for. These are some Got of the it. things that we've done. Adam has been uh, you know, to the garage a few times okay. and had a previous relationship, I think, a few years ago. I actually have a phone conversation with Adam on Monday. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get cool. him on the show. That'll be he's cool. He's a, a tough guy to track down. Yeah, home. man, he's nonstop <laughs> busy, dude. Yeah. He's, uh, he's, if he's not in Colorado, he's right. at some car show right. going and, yeah. and just nonstop. So they've got... Those guys are excellent guys over yeah. there, and they really were pivotal in oh, helping us. I'm gonna throw us. your name out. I'm yeah. gonna be like, dude, I just met with Chris yeah. and Jeremy. So. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. So, and really, you know, from from an operational standpoint, there there's no blending between the two brands in terms sure. of you know cross contamination sure. or anything like that. The blends are our own. It was there's, basically a back end uh, deal. How do you get the bottles right. in the boxes right. out to the right. bo out to the customer sure. in a when you've got you know three four hundred orders in queue? Right. You know, it's right. one thing if you can do it once, but you need a repeatable right. process. Right. And so they were pivotal. We needed to move quickly, right. and instead of trying to learn by you know doing it, let's learn from somebody got who's it. kind of already done it and here's sure. some of the Smart. the road marks you basically you know. got a mentor for the business exactly just yeah. like just like detailers go to training or or any of that to learn the process not not to have it done for them but to have the process down of exactly what, what it is you you lead a horse to water right and you know it, what you teach what what's the I don't, saying i always yeah. get confused that old adage I don't know. you know it's got to be your bull yeah. something like yeah. that you know i forget but yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you you know you teach a man to fish and right. he'll, he'll eat the go. rest of his life type right. thing it's right. the one right. we were going for yeah. so I hear you. um yeah. but yeah that that that's not anything that we're afraid of right. there is a lot of question out there and we try to stay on top of it out on social media sure. of anybody who is asking Asking, and we appreciate the questions. Sure. We're not against them. Um, you know, it was something we did choose some similar packaging. Um, again, that was really to help support the e-commerce side of the business. Right. Round bottles are much easier um, space-wise to ship. I bet and those questions and concerns that you're getting are coming from detailers because I just have a, a, a thought that Greg here, who's more of an enthusiast, mm -hmm. you know, maybe isn't going to try to make that connection. Yeah. He probably doesn't even care. Exactly. He just wants a product that works and that he likes. So exactly. I have a feeling that that the the disconcerting detailer is the one giving you guys crap about yeah. that. As I would. I mean, I would put myself in that camp. Yeah. yeah. I, I'd ride you a little bit on that. Yeah. But, um, 
And I would probably be doing the same thing too if I if the shoe were on the other foot if I weren't the one running this business. But you guys are, are aren't ducking from it either. Exactly. So yeah, we're not trying to hide from it. We're not trying to, you know, it is what it is. We're not. You can go find the information if you want to find the information if you're so inclined to do so. But that and this isn't a bash on the Adams brand or any of the other brands out there. But I've got a whole group of friends uh, that like clean cars, but they aren't as into it as maybe totally. you and I are. Uh, or us three are, right. and when I say, "Hey, have you guys ever heard of Adams?" Right. Who's Adams? Right. Have you guys ever heard of Chemical Guys? Right. Who's Chemical Guys? Right. They know Meguiar's. They right. know Mothers because that's 100%. the stuff that's on the AutoZone shelf. That's the stuff 100%. that's on the O'Reilly shelf. It's what they learned with. That's what I learned with. Right. Those are the brands that everyone. So 100%. your abso- your point is absolutely there, and a hundred percent is there are people who who definitely know the difference, right. who are are much more in tune to the different brands that are out there, what's available, what makes them different, so on and so forth. And those people can probably spot some similarities more readily than somebody else. But but even if you can, yeah, does it even matter? Exactly. And that's always my argument is like, does it work for you? Yeah. Who cares? That's, you know, customers, guys will bash chemical guys up and down and then I'll have a customer that loves it. And the customer goes, well, am I using good products? And my answer always is, do you like them? Mm-hmm. And if they say, yeah, I'm going to say, then yeah, they're great products. Yeah. It's I so, mean, it's all preference. Yeah, so much of it comes down to personal preference on what you, you've tried it and you like it. Right. I know a lot of detailers, professional guys who, you know what, they make their own concoctions. Is 100%. It compound one yep. mixed with a little yep. bit of polish two, and a little bit of glaze here. And man, right. that's my one step and it, yep. I finish everything with it. Right. It doesn't matter, blah, blah, blah. That's my thing. It, I think, is very much the same thing. Right. People may not be so much of a bathtub chemist at home, sure. but they try something, they like it, right. and if it works for you, if it's getting you the results that you like, then go for it. Go for Who it. Cares? You know, what matters, what it says on the bottle, whose 100%. name is it, so on and so forth. So, um, you know, that aside, we want you to definitely go to lenosgarage.com and buy Leno's Garage products, but use what makes you, you know, makes you happy. Use what works for you. Um, And if you're open to trying something, that's kind of all we're asking is, hey, give us a shot. We're here. You won't be disappointed with it. Um, We're here to stay and, you know, give it a real solid look before you make any kind of. And that's what I always suggest to guys is like, just try it. Yeah. Just try it. What are you going to lose? What are you going to lose? Exactly. You know, don't. Don't become the dinosaur. Yeah. Just try it. If you don't like it, don't use it. Don't buy it again. Mm -hmm. Because you guys aren't looking for the one-time buy anyway. No. We we want people, you know, people, we always said this even from the beginning, is that Jay's name will sell the bottle the first time. Right. But what's on the inside is going to get them coming back the second and the third time. So um, that's always, again, I've said it a few times just sitting down here today is, Quality's huge for right. us. Is it's got to be the best in there that's in the bottle. We can't have anything 100%. that's halfway there. Um, and and like you're saying, give it a shot. You know, you don't have, you really don't have anything to lose. We've got our money back guarantee. If for some reason you got it, you hated it, send it back to us. Right. We'll cut you your money back. We're not trying to tie that to you. The lights are turning. The off. lights are turning off on us. So we <laughs> we got to make more movement. <laughs> yeah. You know. Any uh, any last words you want to say or any no, last really, plugs I, you want? You know? I think you know you had asked uh, where they can get it right yep. now. You know, online is what we have. Okay. We've got our website lenosgarage.com. No dashes, nothing crazy. Cool. L e n o s garage.com. Cool. Um, you can also get it at autogeek.com. They're one of our partners. Cool. They've got everything. Um, so it just depends on what your preference is, but. Um, head over to the website, sign up for our mailing list. We're always putting out awesome coupons. We, nice. you know, biggest thing is we want to incentivize everyone to, to try and try it. So we've got a couple cool monthly kind of mystery box type things that we do that cool. make it nice. But you can follow us on Instagram, Leno's underscore garage. Um, we're on Facebook as well. If you look up Jay Leno's Garage Advanced Vehicle Care, we're there. Um, you can come find us, but you can get to everything from the website. So, awesome. um, but yeah check us out give us a try cool well i appreciate the tour and yeah. taking the time i know you got a, a truck yeah. to head home too so you the later you get out of here the, <laughs> the worse it gets so yeah. we'll wrap this up but I, I really do appreciate you showing us around and taking yeah. the time thank you guys for coming out we really appreciate yeah, thanks. it thanks
All right. Hope you guys enjoyed that episode with Chris. Again, big thanks to Chris um, and all the people that made that happen over at Jay Leno's Advanced Vehicle Care. Check them out if you feel inclined to. <laughs> As you can see, I'm, I'm still here. I'm still here with the little one. Um, anyway, check out autofiber.com. Check out the Detailer's Inner Circle. That is just extremely popping right now at detailerinnercircle.com. For those of you that are in it, thank you. And uh, I will catch you guys on the next episode uh, before my daughter steals the mic back from me. All right. Catch you guys there. Bye.